so I have been telling my husband, he's laughing at me. I was telling my husband about this book that I'm reading. It's really good. So I wanted to give him all the details about the book. Let me tell you the name of it. That's not what you said. What did I say? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what happened. And you haven't missed a single detail. I know, you got to know. You know, I got to tell you all the good and all the bad. Wait a minute, where is it? Let me find my Kindle app. It's called The Great Alone by, it keeps going away. I'm trying to get the author. I think her name is Hannah. Oops. Oh, Kristen. Her name is Kristen. I'll put it on the screen, but it's a really good book. So, yeah, I've been giving him all the details of blow by blow. He said everyone, meaning every detail. I've been really getting into the nitty gritty. But I wanted to share with you that my next sewing make is going to be a 2020. He is really, why are you laughing at me now? He thinks I'm funny. Yes, he does. Anyway, my next sewing make is going to be a 2020 pattern. It's super cute, but it came out in the year of 2020 and I saw it and I was like, okay, I actually made this before, but this time I'm making a different view. McCall's 7900 view B is what I'm working on next. I cut out all of the pieces. I did cut out a size six. This pattern is rated as easy. The bodice has darts in the front waist area and also in the back waist area. The sleeves are gathered at the top and then they also have an elastic casing. So I just marked this line here so I'll know where the casing goes. There are ruffles around the neck area and then a ruffle around the waist. And for this waist ruffle, I decided to lengthen this pattern piece by one inch. I just basted this ruffle on. There are only eight pattern pieces, so I don't think this is gonna take too long. And I'm using just a cotton fabric that I purchased from Joann Fabrics. There will be four buttons to go down the front. I picked up these buttons from Joann Fabrics. This is just a general idea of how the buttons should look. I think I like it. I gathered the ruffle that goes on the bottom and I just pinned it to the bottom and it's pinned upside down because you're going to flip it out like this. So this edge is finished with a narrow hem and then I'm going to baste it on. This is how the top is looking so far on the dress form. I still need to actually baste the ruffle onto the bottom. This is the back of the top and I think this will be so cute with a lot of things, but I am really picturing this with denim, like a pair of jeans. So last night after I put the bodice on the dress form, I took a break. I went to bed actually. So now I'm ready to get started and pick up where I left off, which is to go ahead and baste this bottom ruffle on. Now this is one of the patterns where you get to choose the bodice based on your bust cup size and I chose a B cup bodice. So I probably need to turn my iron on but I'm thinking after this I may go take another break and go in the kitchen and cook something to eat. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the bodice on for now. Not the bodice, the ruffle on for now and then do something else. So I'm just doing this little by little. I'm getting it done piece by piece. Okay. Oh, I love this little wrist pin cushion. And let's see, this is basted. So let me increase my stitch length. All right, so now I can go ahead and get started. I was thinking that this would be a cute top with some covered buttons, like fabric covered buttons. So I thought about it after I bought the buttons that I have already. So I think that would be really cute. And I don't have a button covered 
making kit or a kit to make covered buttons. And I was looking online and I saw that you can actually make covered buttons without a kit. But I also saw a video on how to use the kit and I was like, oh, that doesn't look hard. So I actually put it on my list. I keep a list in my phone of things that I want to buy. And so I plan to pick up a kit so that I can make covered buttons sometime. I don't know when, but if I have the kit, then, you know, I won't have to worry about, oh, I don't have a kit. I can just make them whenever I feel the desire. So I don't think this top is going to take long after I sew or base this ruffle onto the bottom, then I'm going to attach the neck facings, the back facing to the front facing, I should say. And then attach the facing around the edge of the top. And put the sleeves on. And then that should be pretty much it after that. I cannot wait to wear this top. I think it's going to be so nice. I sewed the buttonholes and I put the buttons on the top because I wanted to try it on to make sure it was going to fit before I started working on the sleeves. And it fits okay. So now with the sleeves, it has bias tape that goes on this line here. And they want you to stitch the sleeve together and then put the bias tape on. But I think I'm just going to put the bias tape on while the sleeve is open like this. And then I'm not going to sew all the way to the edge. I'll leave some of this unstitched, but I will stitch really close to the top and the bottom edge. And then, like I said, when I get down to the end, I'll just stop sewing back here and then I will stitch the sleeve together and then I can finish off the remainder of the bias tape. I can like tuck it in at the end. I just think that that will be a little bit easier if I do it while the sleeve is flat. I bought a set of bodkins. They come in different sizes and I just got these in the mail so I'll actually get to use them for the first time. And I'm trying to find the thinnest one or the smallest one, I think. They actually look like they are all the same size, but I thought, huh, maybe it's three sets of the same size because they all look like they're the same size. I just have three of them, I guess. Okay. Are these all the same? They are, huh? Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, so anyway, what you do is you move this little thing, slide it, I guess you slide it back, okay, and then you put the elastic through, and then you move this down to squeeze it, and then you would take this and pull it through the casing. Normally I use a safety pin, but I figure a botkin would be easier. So that's what I'm going to do. But before I can do all that, I need to put the gathering stitches around here. And then I also need to stitch up this seam. I did stitch really close to the bottom and the top. And like I said, I just left some stitches stitching undone. I didn't stitch all the way to the end on either side. That way when I'm stitching this together, right sides together, I won't catch this in the seam allowance. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish working on the sleeves and get these all done. I pinned the sleeve seam. And what I'm going to do is just fold the bias tape back and make sure it's out of the way. And 
then I will go ahead and stitch this seam and then I'll show you what I'll do next. So here's the seam and I just trimmed it down and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to trim the bias tape so let me just cut it down just a little well kind of a lot and I can fold it under like this and then stitch just the very edge and make it come up and meet with the stitching that I already have here so I'll just need to stitch on this edge just a little and here just a little and then the same thing on this side I will trim this down and stitch the edges and leave an opening for the elastic to go through so it'll look something like this and then the elastic can feed through with the bodkin in my case. I am ready to insert the elastic into the casing and I was looking at these tools and I actually picked up this one and I was pulling on the end and it wouldn't come off so I had to go back and look at a video because I was like well what do I do with this and I learned that if you have a string or something that you want to thread through something else you can just pull it through this eye and then you can thread it through with this tool so I was like oh okay but for my purposes, I'm just going to be using the one that looks like this, the tweezer looking one. I think I'm gonna end up having to use a safety pin. The opening is kind of tight and I don't wanna force this in here when I could just use a safety pin. It has this little bar, you know, that's holding the clamp closed, but this little bar stops when I get to the opening, so. It's going to be a safety pin for me after all. just woke up I have a fairly long day planned and let me show you what I'm gonna wear I'm actually going to wear this exposed seam dress that I made and believe it or not I am going to a funeral so yeah that's what my day is going to entail I will put a link to the video that I made on this dress just in case you're interested in seeing it or making it yourself Cross the highest mountain, no matter.